Hi guys, tonight we're going to learn a little bit more about um, the ancient Egyptians. If you were in my class for multiplication division, you'll remember that we learned how to multiply how the Egyptians did. Now we're going to learn about how they thought about fractions. So watch this short video first and we'll get into the math piece. The hawk god, Horus, was worshipped throughout ancient Egypt. Legend has it that Horus's left eye was ripped out in battle, but reinstated by the ibis-headed god, Thoth. The eye of Horus became a symbol of wholeness or completeness, while the parts of his eye were used to denote fractions. The Egyptians began using fractions over 4,000 years ago. As their society grew, Fractions were used to divide up precious land along the Nile. They were used to split the year into seasons, so that they knew when to plant crops. And it would have been almost impossible to impose fair taxes without fractions. But calculations could be cumbersome, as almost all of the fractions that the Egyptians used were a specific type. The Egyptian system was based on unit fractions, which always have one on the top and a whole number on the bottom. With one as the numerator, this meant that the Egyptians had no symbols for fractions such as five sixths or seven tenths. Instead, the Egyptians would express these numbers as the sum of unit fractions. For example, one half plus one sixth plus one sixth would be used instead of five sixths, as a half is the same as three sixths. This complicated practice of adding unit fractions continued from the ancient Egyptians through the Greek and Roman empires until the Middle Ages. Using unit fractions alone made calculations difficult, but they were considered the only correct way of writing fractions. It is because of this belief that the fractions we use today are known as vulgar fractions, because they do not celebrate the wholeness of the great hawk god, Horus. Okay, so um, that should shed a little bit of light for you about what they thought about fractions. Very interestingly, the Egyptians did not think about fractions to be anything but a unit fraction, like this, or a sum of unit fractions. Now, they would not think of one-third as being one-fifth three times because here we have the same denominator repeated over and over again and they did not accept this very interestingly and so people kind of say that their way of representing fractions so if you think about I'm going to show you one example that would work um, they would represent the fraction um, let's see they would represent the fraction three-fourths as a sum of these two unit fractions. It checks out because the numerators are both one and the denominators are different and so this is something that they would accept. Okay, So it's kind of complicated to be able to make the sum of the unit fractions like this. Okay, So we're going to kind of study the way to do this with a picture. All right, So let's take a look right here at this word problem. Suppose that Cleopatra wishes to share his five bolts of purple fabric with eight workers in the snail factory. Now think about the fraction that's involved. It's five eighths. Okay. 
That's the way that we would express it. We would say that if we, he wants to share five holes with eight people, that each, work, each worker would get five ace. Okay, that's how we would represent that currently. But the Egyptians would not think five eighths to be a, a legitimate fraction. So, to, in order to find this, we want to show five holes split between eight people. Okay, so first, right off the bat, we need to create five holes. Here's my second hole, my third hole, my fourth hole, my fifth hole. Okay, and you'll notice that these holes right here are split up into different um, parts than this one right here, which makes sense because we want a sum of two different fractions with different denominators. So this one is split up into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. And so if eight people were trying to share just this right here, then one of those people would just get one eighth, and that would be fair at that point. But we know that there's more to share. There's these four holes, too. And so let's split up these four holes into eight equal parts because we're sharing with eight people. This hole right here has two parts. This would have four all together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these four holes can be split into eight equal parts. If the workers would split up just these equally, one worker would just get a half of a hole, okay? So when you think about their combined total, what they took from this hole and then what they took from these holes, each worker got an eighth and then a half, right? An eighth from this hole and a half from this set, because remember there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections. And since there's eight workers, each of them should just get one of those sections. So this would be the way that Egyptians would represent five eighths. They would say that five eighths is an eighth plus a half. And it checks out if you go ahead and do it in your calculator. Let's do one more together, and then I'm going to give you two to do on your own. I want you guys to ignore the worksheet. The worksheet is um, a little too complicated for us right now. Um, so we're going to do, you can turn the worksheet over and do these on the back if you want, but don't do the problems on the front. Okay, the first problem I want to do is if we were to try to represent 3 divided by 4. So 3 holes are divided into 4 parts. Okay, 3 holes divided into 4 parts. Remember, we can, can't represent it as one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. We have to have a sum of two different unit fractions. So let's see. Let's take three holes total, one, two, three, and we want to make sure that they're separated into different size parts. So let's split this one into fourths first because it'd be easy to see that if there was four workers splitting up just this right here, each of them would get a fourth. Okay, does that, I hope that makes sense. So if they were just sharing this hole, each of them would get a fourth. And now we can look over here at these other two holes. How can we split these up into four sections? Well, seems kind of easy. We can split each of them in half, and now there's one, two, three, four sections. And so if the workers were sharing these two, each of them would get another half. Okay, each of them would have one of these. And so here is the way that you would represent three-fourths, a sum of one-fourth and a half, okay? We just want to make sure that we have two different unit fractions, all right? Now you can try on your own. I just want you to try two. I'm going to type these up right here. I want you to try this one on your own by drawing a picture. I want you to try dividing four holes amongst nine people. So basically I want you to represent four ninths. And I would like you to try, let's see, divide three holes amongst ten people. So basically I want you to represent three tenths as an Egypt, a sum of Egyptian unit fractions. 
So go ahead and try these two with the pictures. Um, do your best. I'm not worried about it being perfect, but try your best using the two examples that I gave you. Okay, using the two examples that I gave you. Good luck.